Hi, I'm Friedrich Lonkin. I'm a professor for wheat breeding at the University of Hohenheim. And today I want to show you the pedigree selection methodology. This is a schematic illustration for pedigree selection in wheat. See here on the left side the scale for the year where we are. Here we have the generations across the F1, F2 and the following generations. And here we have the schematic illustration. In the first year we do a cross. Here between parent 1 and 2, between parent 3 and 4 and so on. For simplification we concentrate now on one cross. The few harvested kernels of the cross are then handed over in the second year in the F1 generation. As we have crossed two homozygous lines, according to Mendelian law, there is no segregation in F1, it's just the multiplication of seeds. We harvest it completely and harvest, uh, so in the F2 generation a lot of seeds. The principal size depends on the breeder, I would say between 1000 and 10,000 single plants will then be grown here and we start single ear selection in the field according to plant health, ear type, etc. And we take here this ear for instance and make a classical ear to row. One ear is one row in the F3 generation. In the F3 generation we then select in two steps. First we select between the different rows and in this illustration the green rows are taken uh, for the next generation. And in the second step inside the row we can select the best ears. In our example here we take three ears and put them in the next generation. We use once again ear to row. It means one ear here is one row in the F4 generation. But in the F4 generations we have now a more um, uh, structured selection. We have here the group of three rows, we would call it now family, and this family traces back to one row in the F3 and at the end to one single F2 ear. And we select first in the F4 generation between the different F4 families, and then when we say we select it, we can select in the second step the row we want to take and in the third step the ears we want to take. And in the F4 generation we normally go in another system towards the F5 generation. We select the row we want to continue, the few ears we take and put them in the maintenance breeding. But the remaining bulk of the family is used as bulk seed for yield trials in multiple locations. In the F5 generation these yield trials are then harvested and we make a visual selection in the field but mostly a selection based on the results we get from the different locations. And for instance when we select this F5 line we don't use the seed, we use the seed of the maintenance breeding where we don't make much selection, we just harvest them and use the bulk for the seeds for the yield trials in the F6 generation, which is even bigger at more locations. For maintenance breeding we take out of uh, the, the F5 maintenance breeding one row her family and put this in a further multiplication in the F6 generation. But once again here no selection, we select in the yield trials and we take then the seeds of the selected um, F6 line from the yield trials to continue the breeding scheme with further maintenance and yield trials and the next step would be registration trials. In the next step in this film now I want to show you the steps from cross until F6 in small videos out of the field. The first step in the breeding 
process is the cross of two different parents. In wheat, we have a hermaphrodite flower, therefore we have to open first the flower that we can castrate it. In the second step, we have now to castrate the flower. That means we have to eliminate the anthers that still there is only the pistil inside. In the back you see the castrated ear and we take now father ears which are not castrated where you can see the anthers coming out of the flower, put them in the bag, we close the bag and shed the bag that the pollen out of the anthers goes to the castrated ear to the pistils and fecundate it. The harvest here, the few kernels are put in the F1 generation. In the F1 generation, we just make a multiplication of the kernels from crossing. Here you see one row, one meter long, 20 centimeters width, small blades, all progenies for the future. In F1, it's just a multiplication, no selection possible due to Mendelian law. In the F2 generation, we make single plant selection. Here you see a single plant. Behind it, it's the next single plant. Here's a, a tall single plant. Each plant will be selected uh, on an individual basis. Out of here, roughly 2,000 plants we select at the end, maybe 200, which will go then to the next generation. And a single ear is harvested, which gives the next generation a single row. We are now here in the F3 generation, which is the largest base requirement for each cross in a pedigree scheme. While in F2 each single plant was a different genotype, but it was planted as a, a single plant, we grow here a row per uh, genotype. Thus we harvested one ear, and this was now zone as one row here. And you see here, different rows next to each other. First genotype, second one with lodging, third one as well, fourth one standing and early, next high lodging. Here we see a greener, that means later. Uh, development, then we see a lot of lodging and on about genotype 25 we come up with a nice one, good plant height, good leaf health, a bit late and then we see others lodging around. Here we select on each row and harvest a single row at the end to be sown in the next generation the F4. In the F4 generation we get more space requirement per individual genotype. These are here 12 rows sewn from one F3 row. Each of the 12 rows here traces back to one F3 single ear but the whole group goes back to the single row in F3, which is a single F2 plant. And within that cross, we have different families of that size. Here's the first one, then we see here a second one, next one here, a third one, a fourth one, here the yellow one, a fifth one, and so on. That means much more space requirement per family, but only a few 
genotypes kept. And we select then at the end a group, first a, a four family here, and then within we can select different a single row because you see here still segregation a green late type and the early uh, yellow type and we select here a single row which is then handed over in the maintenance breeding and the bulk of seed is harvested of the rest of the four family to be used as bulk seed for first yield trial in f5 here we are in the F5 generation. You see two different yield plots next to each other. Six square meter place for one genotype. Here, first one, second one, third one, and furthermore, hundreds, hundreds of genotypes in yield tests at different locations now for a first yield test in the F5 generation. That means once again more space requirement per genotype and less genotypes here, mainly uh, only very few per single cross still in the test. And selection is done here for sure a bit visually, but you get also a lot of data for statistical analysis across different yield locations. In the F6 generation, only those few genotypes which have been very good in yield trials in the F5 generations were once again tested now in an even wider network of test locations across different environments and target regions. Parallel, you have disease multi uh, observation plots and backing tests. And the system can be continued like that all the time, we're getting less and less genotypes, which are tested more and more intensively on yield, quality, disease resistance, and all other requirements of the supply chain.